Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this beautiful Sunday afternoon. Welcome to Testament Ministries International. Continue to bless this um, church or nonprofit organization where we want people to love God and to love others. I hope, Lord, that through this ministry, many will come to know a biblical principle, what you want to teach us about how to relate and in handling wealth for our session this afternoon in James chapter 5, verse 1 to 6. Lord, give us presence of mind and prepare our hearts as we listen to your word. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say, Amen. You can type in the chat box huh? if Amen. you cannot unmute. Okay, so our topic today is a continuation of our uh, book of James. It's entitled The Illusion of Wealth. Yes, I'm here right now in Cebu City in Silenea's Tower Kids area. <laughs> so I'm just trying to connect here. Thank you for internet connections. So wherever we are, we can still um, have Bible study. I hope you can also share our replay to your friends, okay? And invite your classmates or cousins. Now, um, when you think of wealth, do you think it's good, essential, or inessential, or something that contributes well to your life? Do you think it's being wealthy and rich makes you be a better person? Let us see what the Bible is teaching us. Okay, let us read. May I request Hagios to please read. I know you have a sore in your tongue, but it's okay, Hagios. Just slowly read. Hagios, are you there? James chapter 5, verse 1. Wala to... kong nakikita. Walang nakikita. I'm sorry, ha? Huh? I will I will share screen again. Mm -mm. Can you see now? Can you give me a heart shape if you can if you can hear me and you can see the screen? Agios, can I you can see? only hear, I cannot see. Mala. It just why? says Mary Catherine Hana started screen sharing. Oh, why is that so? Anyway, allow me to read. If you have your Bibles with you. Please open to James chapter 5, verse 1 to 6. You can download your Bible apps in your cell phone, in your laptop. Now listen. Oh, wait. Do I read it now? Sure, Hagios. Now listen, you rich people, weep and wail because of the misery that is coming on you. Wait, your wealth has rotted and, and moths have eaten your clothes. And leave it. Okay, continue, Hagios. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Continue. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. Continue. You have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you. It's quite a very strong verses, no? Passages about God's judgment to rich people who handle wealth in a way that is not pleasing to the Lord. So you can see here that we should not um, be like hoarding our wealth. Uh, we should be um, sharing it. Now, this is talking about or guiding us how we should handle our wealth and how we should operate, something like that. So, James now uses the word rich, rich people to address those who are non believing, ungodly rich people outside the church. It is possible though that there might be a few in attendance in the congregation also now who is mishandling their wealth. 
like they become greedy, stingy, that they, I mean, it's okay to be stingy because you need to save, but not in a way that you just fatten yourself, indulgent in luxury, and then you forgot your role to share. But why should James address these rich men if they are outside the church? This kind of message is akin to what the Old Testament prophets did when they uttered judgment against the pagan enemy nation of Israel and the unfaithful leaders who oppressed the poor and the needy. So this message are those addressed to people who look down, who are not compassionate to people who are poor. So James is making a prophet warning prophetic warning to this group of people. So let us be careful no? how we handle wealth that we will not be judged by God. So I allow me to share to you um, a YouTube video of a, man, uh, of a pastor, I think, sharing uh, his thoughts about should Christian be rich? So it's about nine minutes, but it's a good to it's good to listen. I please listen carefully, huh, everyone? Should Christians be rich, or is it more spiritual for us to avoid riches altogether and just live some humble, modest life? That is coming up next on the beat. First time here. On this channel, we answer frequently asked questions about the Christian faith. We talk about dating and relationships from a Christian perspective, and we do all sorts of other Bible-based videos as well. So if you're new, consider subscribing. So if you're just joining us, we have been in a series on Fridays going through the book of James. I wanna say this is our sixth or seventh video. I actually lost count. But if you missed all of those, I wanna encourage you to go back and watch different groups of people. If you will recall, in James chapter 2, he talked about the importance of those who are rich not showing favoritism to those who are rich and looking down upon those who are poor. And so clearly there were some rich people in this assembly and also some poor members as well. Also, there are some Christians and there are some people that are just visiting and they're not Christians. And so it appears as though the group of rich non-Christians is the Clearly, he's talking to rich people who are not saved. And it says here, your wealth has rotted and moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. So essentially what James is saying here is that all of your wealth one day is going to eventually corrode. It's going to waste away. And on the day of judgment, it is going to testify against you. Now, how did they acquire their wealth? Well, first of all, it says here that they hoarded it. It says you have hoarded wealth in the last day. And so he says, essentially, if this is the way you're getting rich, where you're taking everything. Now, there's a difference between saving money and hoarding money. Saving money says, you know what? I'm going to put some money aside because I may give it away to someone else. I may give it to my children. I may uh, use it for uh, godly principles. But hoarding says, you know, I'm going to take as much money as I possibly can and keep it all to myself. And he says, this is what these people were doing. But the second way that these guys were getting rich was even worse. And it was because they were cheating people out of their wages. Notice what it says here in verse 4. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workers who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. So this is really bad, right? In other words, instead of them being generous to the poor, they were cheating them out of their wages. And so basically, essentially what it looked like was this. In Jesus' day, 80% of the population would be considered at a poverty poverty level. They were either in one of two groups. Either the first group was that they were day laborers. In other words, they would go down to the marketplace and they would try to offer themselves out to work that day. And then there's another group that were just too poor to do anything. They were either lame or they were orphans or they were widows or they were lepers. They weren't allowed to be around other people and they just weren't able to work at all. And so because a lot of the people were poor, God had to institute certain laws to ensure that the poor people were taken care of. And let me give you several of them. 
Number one, the Bible taught that they were to immediately pay people as soon as they deliver their work. Don't you hate it whenever you do a job for somebody and it takes them like weeks to pay you? The Bible teaches that whenever somebody does something for you, you pay them immediately. The second thing that God did in order to care for the poor was to release all debts every seven years. Now, wouldn't that be great if all your student loans, all your car payments, all your house payments, all your credit card payments were just simply released every seven years? Essentially, God did this so that it would not be a society where the rich kept getting richer and the poor kept getting poorer. The third thing that God did was that there were certain laws in the Old Testament set up to take care of orphans and widows because these were certain groups that weren't able to take care of themselves. The fourth thing that the Old Testament says that God did was he set up interest-free loans. Wouldn't that be great if you could just borrow the money that you need in order to do whatever you want to do with it and then pay that amount back? Well, in the Old Testament, that's exactly what God told them to do. He says, you know what? Don't take advantage of your brother who does not have the money to pay for something by giving the money and expecting them to give you more back later. He says, no, don't charge them any interest. The fifth thing that God did was that if you were a harvester in the field and you were picking up crops, he says, I want you to purposely leave some crops on the ground. Don't pick all all of them up and give it back to the field owner. No, leave some there purposely so that if the poor come behind you, they can pick up some of the crops for themselves so that they will have something to eat. And then finally, every 50 years, there was something called the year of Jubilee. And this is when God cleared and erased any type of debt. So let's say you had to sell your land that was given to you as an inheritance that should have belonged to you and your family, but you fell on hard times. You had to sell your land. God says, you know what? I'm going to restore that to you and your family every 50 years. Once again, to make sure that the rich don't get richer and the poor don't get poor. So should Christians be rich? Well, the first question I would ask is how are you acquiring your wealth? If you're acquiring it in an honest way, then I don't believe God has anything against you being rich. The second question also now is how are you using the wealth that God has given you? And here we see in verse five and six, it says this, you have lived on earth in luxury and self-indulgence. In other words, he's saying, you know what? Here is the problem. You are just living for yourself. You're buying things for you. You're hoarding things. You're self-indulging. You see something you want it but you're doing it all for you 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 and you're not giving anything else away he says here you have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter and then he says you have condemned and murdered the innocent one who was not opposing you now this is very interesting essentially what the rich were doing in that day is that they were using their riches to bribe the judicial system so that the guilty would go unpunished and then the poor who were innocent who were not able to defend themselves would actually be punished and god says you know what this is a wicked use of your money. So if you are a Christian and God has blessed you with a lot of money, what does the Bible have to say about how you should be using your money? Well, let me jump outside of James for a moment and take you to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 17 through 19. It says here, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant. So the first thing he says here is this, if you are rich and God has blessed you, don't flaunt it, don't be arrogant with it, don't put it in front of other people, live a modest, humble life if God has blessed you. The second thing that he says here is that we should not put our whole in wealth. Why? Because it is so uncertain. And so if God has blessed you with a lot, there is a temptation to say, you know what? I don't need God because I have my 401k, I have my bank account. He says, no, if you are rich, it says here, but put your hope in God. Let's continue reading. It says here, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. And so that's the third thing. If God has blessed you to be rich, then you know what? He's blessed you to enjoy the fruit of your labor. In other words, don't feel guilty or bad that for whatever reason, God has blessed you to be rich. He says, you know what? God has blessed you and simply enjoy your riches. The fourth thing that he says that we should do good things with it. He says here in verse 18, command those to do good and to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. And so he says, hey, if you are rich and God has blessed you, you should do good deeds with it. You should share it. You should be willing to give it away to those who are in need. And then finally, he says, you know what? God will bless you not only in this life, but in the life to come. It says here in verse 19, in this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves. In other words, whenever you manage your money well and you give it away, you're essentially laying up and storing up treasures for yourself in heaven as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. And so once again, the question is, should Christians be rich? Now, I don't personally see any reason why Christians should not be rich, particularly in situations where when God knows that somebody is going to use that money for godly purposes, willing to share and give to those who are in need, why would God not bless you with even more? Question of the day, what is your perspective on...
Did you learn something there? I hope you do, no? Uh, when God bless Christians, let us be good steward of God's resources and use it for his glory. Like we will be um, treating our workers fairly. We will be helping the poor and we will let land without interest if possible. And let's be uh, using our money not to hoard it, but to be a channel of blessing through good deeds. Yes, so let's move, move on. I ang ganda, no? I, I like how he also highlighted um, God's favor to make sure that the poor will not be poorer and the richer will not be also too rich. So there will be like that. So the Apostle, J, uh, Apostle James hoped that this warning to the ungodly rich can accomplish two things in the hearing of the church. That through these passages, we can see God is just and faithful. Can you say it with me or you type in the chat box? God is just and faithful. He will take care of his people and will surely judge the wicked. God is not uh, sleeping. Do you know that song of Gary Valenciano? Natutuluba, I'm just natutuluba. He's not sleeping. He is there watching. And if you, there are wicked people who who uh, who do you think like is squand uh, gaining wealth that is not in dishonest means, mga like that through illegal means, the Lord will have His judgment on them. So let us not be like and views let's do the right thing when we do business someday when you are older or even right now no as young as you are it's good to have an entrepreneurial mindset now you do trading you help your family business you learn from your parents no who or who among you have family business so please help your parents because you don't know when your parents will leave this world so you can gain wisdom from their experience no because you will be the one benefited also when you help your parents and when you're being blessed financially through our session this afternoon you will be taught how should you use your wealth as rich christian no Amen. Can you say amen for that? It's good to be a channel of blessing, no? Not someone who owe money. But yes, but we will be the one to lend people money because we have extra. Next, God's people must never be like those ungodly rich who hoards the misery of wealth. Do you know that wealth, you cannot bring it to heaven? Empty you came to earth, empty you go. Wealth has rotten. It will rot. It will burn. It will not last forever. Even your expensive clothes, branded clothes has been eaten by moth. Gold, silver can also be corroded. So that's why we are encouraged in the Bible to lay up our treasures where? Everybody say heaven. Lay up your treasures where? In heaven. Meaning, let's not be only focused on material, acquiring material wealth, but we will also be rich in serving, in good deeds, in our uh, interceding for other people, in helping other people, even though we're not rich no, financially, but you can give of your time, your listening ear, your compassion, your hard work your effort that's also uh investing treasures in heaven where moth rust or can or it cannot be corroded no like the earthly wealth which is temporary and you can never never bring it to heaven even uh, you try. Uh, some Chinese, no, they have this tradition when somebody died, they build small uh, 
big palaces and they offer yummy food or something like that. But honestly, once a person dies, the Bible says they we face judgment. When we die, we face judgment. And then it's either we go to heaven when we have relationship and put our faith in our Lord Jesus Christ or we have eternal death to those who have not known Jesus as their Lord and Savior and or those who reject. So I hope you, if you haven't put your hope and trust in God, please do so. And the Holy Spirit will help us also and guide us and convict us how we should live our life as someday or right now. If the Lord has blessed us. Actually, riches is subjective. You can say, I'm not rich. But for others, you are rich. So, for Shen Sikati, some people will may see me uh, like I'm not rich. But I want to say that I'm rich in the Lord. No, I have forgiveness of my sin. I have eternal life. I have good friends who loves me. I have family. Oh, that's wealth more than just money per se, per se, no? Okay, so if people see you very rich also, you say, I'm humbled, but honestly, I just have enough oh, that to, to be a blessing to others as well. So let us not be proud, no? So remember... That wealth is not always a blessing if you don't know how to use it. It can corrupt you as well. All this depicts the temporary nature of wealth. It will not last forever. Can somebody read this? Uh, Bianca, what the wealthy think about money? Actually, there's many wealthy people who are living in misery. Okay, please read. I have made. What the, what the world do you think about money? I have made millions, but have okay. bought me no happiness. Ah, uh, okay. Ah, uh, Bianca, I think I have to What's not add, I call others ha, because it's echoing so painful. Can I ask you? Uh, also, Johan, I think you're very near to each other. I ask Donnelly to please read. What wealthy people? What the wealthy think like about that? money? I have made many millions, but they have brought me no happiness. W. Rock. Rockefeller. The care of two hundred million dollars is enough to kill anyone. There is no pleasure in it. Vanderbilt. I am the most miserable man on earth. John Jacob Astor. So these people are very rich, no? They are not just millionaire, but billionaires. But they are not happy. And many successful people, maybe you think they have everything in the world, but they also is depressed like that. I was happier when doing a mechanic job, Henry Ford. You know, Henry Ford is already very rich. He owned the Ford mga cars, no? Company. Millionaires seldom smile. That's what people observe uh, observed by Andrew uh, Carnage, uh, Cringy. So uh, it's better to not be what? <laughs> uh, our goal should not be just become wealthy. It should be living a quality life. I hope that's our goal, no? So that we will not be miserable like those rich people who seldom smile so sadly no i don't know why why it's like that so right now let's continue about um in today's context people think that if they have this they are successful like if they have cash car condominium they have credit card or country club membership so actually um this is not 
as Christian, this should not be our aspiration. Our aspiration should be like this. And as a parent, I'm a mother, my desire is for my children. Instead, as believer in Jesus, we should be rich in this area. So our focus should be we have Christ. Donnelly, yes, Marvin, Joshua, Gian, Luke, oh no, Hagios, we should have Christ relationship as our Lord and Savior. John Robert, listen, ha, that our character is, we have those character of being loving, what? Obedient, respectful, diligent, grow in that, no? Because character is more important than wealth. Commitment. You are a person. You have a word of honor. When you commit something, you follow through. You have the community of people that who cares and you care and who cares for you. And that you are compassionate. No? So the evil of wealth. Money is not evil, but the love of money is. So we love God and use our money not let money lord over us but we need to remember that oftentimes money is gained through unrighteous means for the rich that it, that is why it is called mammon okay so let's be careful of our our emotion hopefully we should not be greedy and hoarders if you think you have enough food for the day if you have extra you learn to share, no? not just stuck up and then suddenly it's spoiled na, sayang. No? So let's be not hoarders, but be a channel to bless others. Next, uh, let's not exploit and be dishonest when we deal with people in our business dealings. Please be truthful of your if you have agreed something you follow that agreement so if you are rich learn, learn to live simply not lavish lifestyle but it's okay if you need to also spend for your family bonding time like that it's also accordingly lang, not too lavishly and as christian let us not be uh, like bribing people so that you gain favor you can get away from your mistake that's injustice if you know you have done something wrong even though you are rich you accept the penalty of your actions you yeah you willingly uh, humble yourself to admit your wrong and you in everything we do, there's consequence to our action. So please remember, if you have done something wrong, if your parents discipline you, if you need to be to repay something, please uh, don't be uh, what you call that com complaining, grumbling, but be compliant, be obedient. Okay, so character is more important than wealth. So, but if you have character, usually wealth follow. When we honor God, surely goodness and love shall follow you all the days of your life. Okay, next. Please read uh, Ching Risada. Um, no, your that's mother's name. Who else? Um, Joe Ford, please read James 5, chapter 4. Look. Look, the wages you fail to pay the worker who mowed the fields are crying out against you. The cries of the uh, harvester have the, reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. Yeah, so happy to see you here, ha. Huh? Please um, join us always every week. Thank you for being here. I'm so happy. So look at the wage you failed to pay the worker. So as employers, 
who are blessed financially, let us not take advantage of our worker. We give what is due to them. So on time, not delaying their salary. So in Hong Kong or in later in the Philippines, these are some of the penalties and offenses for those employer who willfully and without reasonable excuse fail to pay wages to the employee when it becomes due, is liable to persecution, and upon conviction, they will be fined. If you, 350,000 times seven, to, to convert it to peso and to imprisonment for three years. So as employer, let us not delay. Okay, um, Joshua and Gian, you want to share? I want to read. Yeah, I saw you raising your hand. Were a wage offense committed? Usually, by the way, later I call you, huh? If you are employer, usually it's not the employer really disbursing mga ano, no? You have employees also like cashier, your trusted people. So it's connivance of uh, you are being, you are giving consent of your action to agree with your boss. Oh, let's delay lang their salary or what, or let's take advantage of our worker. You will also be liable with that punishment if you agree. So if you are an employee of an employer who is not honest, who are treating the workers unjustly, you can uh, say, I'm Maybe you resign from that work. The Lord will bless you with an uh, employer who are really doing the right thing. no? Or else you will be liable to the same penalty and conviction and offense of, of not giving salary on time or committing that kind of action. So let's be obedient also to the law because God the government is there also to uh, implement no kasi in the bible it's biblical also that god wants the employer to be on time and treat the workers rightly so in the philippines there's grace period like 15 days example uh, your salary should be the worker should be paid on the a first like September one, they're giving fifteen days period to for them to comply. If not, they will also be accountable and will be penalized. Because in our law under House Bill six five three seven, failure to disburse the prescribed wage and salary salaries when payroll funds are already available, it will cost one hundred thousand penalty to the employer. If not informing employers about the absence of funding to be used for payout 200,000. So please uh, take note no, that our laws are there so that to protect also the citizen of the country. So this following penalty will be imposed upon both employer and the payroll master or maybe the accountant who failed to pay wages or salaries without any justifiable reason. First offense, 500,000. Second offense, 1 million. Third offense is 3 million. It's also very high. So our law also protects those employees who are working. No? So someday when you finish schooling, do you want to be employed or do you want to start your own business? So it, you pray to God, what God's leading in your life. This is always be our prayer, no? Lord, your will be done. Listen to the advice of your parents also. What course you will take in college like that. So, yes. So whether you do business, you are guided accordingly. Also, how you treat your employees. If you are an employee, you are protected by the law and also from the word of God. The God will punish the wicked, ungodly, rich employer if they are not treating or being honest or 
taking advantage of you. So please read this one, Jeshua. God sees and hears the cries of the people. Hebrew, please read. Hebrew term, Lord of hosts. Can you unmute? Mom, I cannot see the screen, Pa. I cannot see the screen. If you compare Romans 9.29 with Isaiah 1.9, which means the Lord of armies, especially to the sense of heavenly and angelic armies, it's described God as the warrior, the commander-in-chief in the heavenly army. When peep armies, if people, Christians, cry out to God, God is our God of warrior also, who is our commander-in-chief who will protect his people. No? That's the, ano. So, can you see na the screen? Wala pa rin. So, the warning here. Okay. What is the warning of James chapter 5, verse 1 to 6? Weep and... Weep and well because of the many misery. misery that is coming on you day of slaughter. slaughter is the day of judgment yes so beware no those who are treating unjustly or rich uh, people who are lavishly just uh, indulging themselves hoarding like that they will be judged they their time will come that they will also receive the judgment of the lord so when God says that, you know, it will happen. Everything in the Bible, his promises will really uh, be given to his people. If we are faithful, we will be successful like that. If we meditate on his word day and night, God will just reveal himself to you and he will make you uh, guide you that you will become like a tree in the river that is not easily swayed and that you will be successful in everything you do no that's god's promise honor him and he will honor you if you seek him you, he will find you will find him so please never let go of god as young as you are you talk to god lord manifest yourself to me Please help me know you more. Help me love you. Because left on our own, we easily get distracted. We easily love games over attending church or reading God's word. Sometimes you are, we are easily prone to wonder, prone to commit mistake. You pray to God to help us right now. I pause. Huh? Let's pray. Lord, help me to encounter you, you manifest yourself to me clearly, Lord. Help me to really love you with all of my heart, soul, mind, and strength. Help me, you pray out loud, to love reading your word. Help me, Lord, in my prayer life that I will pray and intercede and just seek you in my life. And that someday as I grow older, even now I know how to handle what is given to me. God give you the blessing of being healthy. You have your family, you got your parents, if they give you resources, whether money or uh, something, material things you can share if you have clothes things that you think you can be a blessing to others you learn to share not hoard no lord please help us know what is your heartbeat so we can be a channel of blessing to others in jesus name we pray amen so please cry out to god if God hears the cries of those who have been oppressed by the ungodly rich people, he will hear you if you long to be guided by him and to know him more. Okay, so almost done. So let's be careful how we handle our wealth because we will be judged. 
Okay. According to Patrick Henry, sabi niya, I have now disposed all my property to my family, to his children, relatives. But there is one thing more I should, I wish I could give them. And that is, faith in jesus christ marvin can you continue if they had that oh marvin left i had not given them a single shilling they would have been rich and if they had not that and i had given them all the world they would be poor indeed i think i've read this one time and i shared this to you before as parents no that also is my heart if there's something i can leave behind to my children of course i want them to have like house or condo or uh, something money to be left behind to my children but the most important inheritance that i could give to my children and i hope to your parents also and someday when you become a parent you invest that your children will get to know jesus christ as their lord and savior you can develop their character that they will be a man who can know how to commit who is compassionate and and that they can really put god first in their life i hope if i can see that in my daughter in my son I know I can leave this world peacefully knowing that if they are close to God everything will be all right with them even when I give them whatever insurance or blessing financially materially they can still be poor but if they have Christ in their life they will be successful. Diba? That's the promise of the Bible when we seek uh, in Psalms chapter 1. If the righteous follow godly, follow God, everything will be all right. But if the wicked, they will be cut off and they will not be remembered. They will be, they will wither and yeah, they will be judged. So I hope you don't take the word of God lightly, my dear uh, young people. Yes. Chebar, can you read with me this one? Let us all be. Oh, yes. My and your screen is still loading. I see. I think my Wi-Fi is not good. Anyway, let us all be rich in good deeds. And let us shun evil and be good steward of God's resources and blessing. If there's some takeaway that you can have for today, please let's do good deeds with our wealth and riches, whatever God has given us. And let, I think, yeah, my Wi Fi is low. I'm so sorry for that. No, and then let us what share God's blessing to others, shun evil, and be good steward of God's resources. But can you hear my voice clearly? Yes, yes, we can okay. I hear think you that's clearly. good. I'm sorry that my slide is not um, appearing, but that's all my sharing. No, please remember to do good deeds and then, um shun evil by not doing the things that does not please god like mga hoarding mga taking advantage of poor people let us not be like that no anyway i want to share a song to you in closing be thou my vision O lord my god so may our vision is to really please god and honor him in our life can you hear the sound? Can you see the video? Can you put a heart? In we can place? hear the sound. But no video? The, we can see, we can also see the vid video, but uh, it's quite... Uh, lagging? Floppy, I guess. Yeah, lag lagging. Okay. I see, it's lagging. It's lagging.
okay. I think that's end our session tonight. I hope you learned something and thank you. I see you again next week, huh? Uh, did you see me? Can you see me? Okay, let's have a group photo now. Uh huh. I think something wrong with my video. Nag stop na ako video. <laughs> okay. God bless everyone. Hagios, can you help me with the group photo? Shansi Kati's video is not good na. Okay. Smile everyone. Hagios. Hmm. Smile. Yan. Sorry, my video is not working. Good night. I'm slow. Yeah, I'm very slow. Sorry talaga, huh? Okay, I love you, kid. See you next Bye. I love Bye. 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 Take care. Bye, Kati. Bye, bye. See you next Sunday. Jansikati. Yes, oh, yes, Chebar. Uh, may I ask the title for the closing song? Be Thou My Vision. Be Thou My Vision. It's Thank a nice you, song, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay, I like it also. I'm blessed. Okay, take care. God bless everyone. Bye.